Anna smiled. She was strolling along, enjoying the beautiful countryside on a bright spring day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and all was well in her world. A few days earlier, her life had been vastly different, as she was working at the cotton mill situated on the outskirts of her village. The environment there was hostile, dirty and dusty, and she had been humiliated by her foreman. He had slapped her after she lost concentration for a few moments whilst tending to her machine. After enquiring at Bow Edge, an imposing mansion house not far from her home, Anna had gained employment as a scullery maid. She knew it was the lowest grade of work in the kitchen, but she was hard working and ambitious. Anna was determined to better herself and leave behind the poverty she had known in the 12 years of her life. As she ambled on, surrounded by verdant pastureland, Anna marvelled at the sweet-smelling bluebells dotted along the pathway, beautiful in their simplicity. A robin merrily danced around her, singing in the bright sunshine. She felt a frizzen of joy for all the discoveries to come in this new beginning. Anna paused. Bow Edge stood before her. She was suddenly apprehensive. Taking a few minutes rest, she gathered her courage and continued on towards a new start and a very different life. The mansion stood surrounded by the vast, lush countryside, as if it had been there forever. Its facade of honey-coloured stone tall sash windows through which the light flowed, and centrally positioned solid wooden double doors gave the house a majestic air. Anna stood a while, taking in the magnificence of the building. She was to work here. She began to walk, taking the side path which led to the back of the house, as she had done previously for her interview. This was where the kitchen staff, tradesmen and servants' entrance was located. As she approached, Anna grew more nervous. She knocked on the door and was greeted by a girl she had already met. Her name was Ivy and she was the kitchen maid. Being of similar age and disposition, Anna felt sure that they would become friends. The cook, a kind but strict head of the kitchen, gave orders for Ivy to show Anna the way to the room they would share. The working part of the house was a labyrinth of corridors and stairs, sectioned off from the stately rooms. The two girls would rarely, if ever, meet the family, as their lives were vastly different. Eventually, the bedroom was reached. Anna wondered if she would ever be able to navigate her way alone, but was assured that in a short time, every passageway would be familiar to her. The attic room was small, with two narrow iron beds separated by a chest of drawers which were to be shared. The wooden floorboards were bare, there was a small window letting in a little light. At least Anna was to have a bed of her own after sharing with her two sisters at home. This was luxury to her. Anna changed into her uniform, which consisted of a blue dress, large white apron and cap and black shoes. A brown sacking apron was to be worn when working in the scullery. When the girls returned to the kitchen, the cook instructed Anna of her duties. As scullery maid, she was the lowest ranked of the female domestic servants an assistant to Ivy, the kitchen maid. 
However, as Mrs Carter, the cook, was the absolute ruler but fair, she eased Anna slowly into her duties over the next few days. It was physical and demanding labour, but after enduring millwork and its effect on her health, Anna soon settled into her new routine. After rising at 6am, she washed and dressed before descending the stairs and negotiating the passages to the kitchen. Her first duty was to light the fire on the kitchen range for both heat and to boil water for drinks of tea for the staff. More hot water was needed ready for cleaning. The scullery, pantry, kitchen and passages were scrubbed before breakfast. After eating, dishes were cleared away and washed. This task was never ending as snacks, baking and meals were prepared for both the family and staff throughout the day. Large pans, jugs, plates, bowls and cutlery were continually washed, dried and put away. Anna assisted Ivy with food preparation, such as the peeling and chopping of vegetables, plucking fowl and scaling fish. Afterwards, she scrubbed the work surfaces and swilled the stone scullery floor. The most difficult time was when the family entertained guests. The extra work was strenuous and Anna was exhausted at the end of the day. She rarely finished work until late at night, when she would fall asleep as soon as her head touched her pillow. Anna was lucky. Her working day was long, but she ate good, wholesome food, slept in a clean, comfortable bed, and was given two Sunday afternoons off a month. She visited her family at this time, laden with food. Her siblings loved the cakes and pies which the cook sent, and her parents enjoyed a drink of cider made from the apples in the orchard. Anna bloomed. The chest infections and nausea she had suffered during her time at the mill were an unpleasant memory. She was happy. Let's go through some of the vocabulary from this story. Cutlery. Cutlery. Knives, forks and spoons used for eating are cutlery. Disposition. Disposition. The way that someone normally thinks and behaves that shows what type of person they are. Humiliated. Humiliated. If someone is humiliated, they have been made to feel ashamed or stupid. Sibling. Sibling. A sibling is a brother or a sister. Strenuous. Strenuous. If something is strenuous, it needs or uses a lot of effort or energy. Continually. Continually is something that keeps happening without stopping. Dismiss. To dismiss. To decide that something or someone is not important and not worth considering is to dismiss them. Foul. Foul. Foul is a bird that is used to produce meat or eggs. Hostile. Hostile. A hostile place or situation is difficult or dangerous to be in. Imposing. Imposing. If something is imposing, it is noticeable because of its large size, appearance or importance. Instruct. To instruct. To instruct is to order or tell someone to do something especially in a formal way. Labour. Labour. Labour is practical work, especially when it involves hard physical effort. 
mansion. Mansion. A mansion is a very large, expensive house. Negotiate. Negotiate. To negotiate is to have formal discussions with someone in order to reach an agreement. Rank. To rank. To rank is to be good, bad, important, unimportant, etc. compared with other similar people or things. Simplicity. Simplicity. The fact that something is easy to understand or to do.